Hello everyone. Welcome to another video in our civil engineering review and refresher. So for this video, we will present some assorted problems for our final examination in CECC1. Problem 1. An airplane at an altitude of 3,200 meters is flying horizontally at a rate of 102 meters per second, passes over a man on the ground. How fast is the angle of elevation of the airplane changing when the distance between the man and the airplane is 4,000 meters? Okay. So, we have here a time rate problem na? in differential calculus. So, the first step is to draw the figure. So, we have an airplane flying horizontally at an altitude of 3,200 meters. And this is uh, observed by a man on the ground. Na? So, the airplane passes over the man and for any given time t, we have here the angle of elevation of the airplane as observed from the man. Na? So we have here the man on the ground. Okay. So let us say we have the distance from the man horizontally to the airplane. So we do not know this and this is changing our variable. We can represent this horizontal distance by x. And then we have the distance of the man to the airplane. This is also variable, so we will not place the value of 400 meters here. No? Stated in the problem, when the distance of the man and the airplane is 4,000 meters, so this distance. But this 4,000 meters is a given value for a variable. So, for a variable distance, do not uh, place it in the uh, figure. Just represent this by letter. So, I will call it letter Z. Uh, then, we have the rate, 102 meters per second. So, that is the rate at which the airplane is flying. So, in the figure, that is the rate at which the distance x na, is changing. So, we call it dx over dt equal to 102 meters per second. Uh, so, in our problem, we are asked how fast the angle of elevation na, of the airplane changing. So, that is so for d theta over dt. When the value of z, that is the distance of the man to the airplane, is 4,000 meters. Ah, so, in the figure, we have formed here a right triangle. And the height here, the altitude is 3,200. This is x and this is z. So, we can use the tangent function. Tangent of theta is 3,200 over x. And I can solve for theta, na? So, theta is arc tan of 3,200 over x. Uh, then I can use my calculator. So, I need d theta over dt, dt na? d theta over dt, or that is dy over dt. I can set the calculator to rad mode, na? Because it involves arc tan or tangent of the trigo function. So, set the calculator to red mode, then d theta over dt is just equal to the derivative of the arc tan of 3200 over x in the calculator. So, for a given value of x, and then we also multiply it by dx over dt. But, the given value here is the z. So, this is 3200. So, from this triangle, uh, so z is 4000. So, we have x squared is equal to 4,000 square minus 3,200 square. So, the value of x here when z is 4,000 is 2,400 meters. So, the d theta over dt is the derivative of this in the calculator when x is 2,400 and then multiplied by dx over dt which is 102. 
Uh, so if we press the calculator, the answer is negative 0 0.0204 radians per second. So, the negative sign here indicates that the angle of elevation of the airplane as it moves uh, in the right direction is changing negatively, so decreasing. Okay, so this is a uh, time rate problem in differential calculus. Problem number two. In a certain factory of pipes, the diameter of the pipe is normally distributed such that the average diameter is 100 mm and the standard deviation of 2 mm. So determine the probability that a random sample of pipe has a diameter number 1 between 98 mm and 100 mm and number 2 larger than 102 mm. Okay. So this is statistics no? and this is under normal distribution. So from the factory, the uh, pipes produced there has diameter. No? So 101, 102, 103, 97, 98 and so on. And the average diameter is 100 mm and the standard division that is the... Uh, the amount at which the diameter produced deviated from the mean is 2 mm na? so meaning standard division na? so that is 2 mm so for normal distribution na? if we plot the values it will uh, form a bell shaped curve na? so if this is the x-axis we have the normal curb huh? so this is the normal curb and the center of the curb is the value of the mean which is 100 then for any value of the diameter here we can plot it in the x-axis so let us say we have 98 huh? so I can have a value x I will call this x1 equal to 98 huh? So 100 is the mean, let's say 105, 110, we have 95, and so on. No? Okay. But in the calculation, we will not use the value of x, but instead, we change or convert the value of x to z, no? to z-score. And in the z-score, the mean is the zero point. No? So, from x to z, we have this formula. z equal to x minus the mean over the standard deviation. So, if we convert x1 equal to 98 to z, so I have z1 equal to 98 minus 100 over 2. And z1 is negative 1. So, meaning, corresponding to the value negative 8 in x, that is equal to negative 1 or 1 standard deviation below the mean. No? So that is why we have negative 1. Uh, then I can have Z2 no? because we have here between 98 and 100. But we know the value 100 corresponds to the mean. So of course we have here 0 standard deviation from the mean. No? So we have here so, what is the probability required in number 2? So, that is uh, number 1, I mean, 98 to 100. So, this probability here. Okay, so, to continue, we need this. No? So, in probability, the area corresponding to this no? under the normal curve is what we need. That is the probability that when you draw a pipe, the diameter is between 98 to 100. Or in the z scores, no? that corresponds to negative 1 to 0. Okay, so how will we input that in our calculator? Set the mode to stat and then clear, no? Uh, then shift. In uh, press shift one, uh, so start mode. Then we have five the distribution. 
Then 1, that is the P probability, na? Then press negative 1, and then close. Uh, so, when you enter, or when you uh, press the equal sign, this will give you 0.15866 in the calculator. So, what's the meaning? The meaning there is, when we have x1 equal to 98, this 0.15866 is the probability that the randomly selected sample is less than 98 mm. So meaning this probability 0.15866 is the area under the normal curve to the left of 98 or to the left of z equal to negative 1. Okay. But the question here is between 98 and 100. So we have this na. Again. Uh, between 98 and 100. And we seek for the area here. Uh, so notice that since when we press like this, the answer that will appear is the area to the left of the given value. So, we can say, therefore, that between 100 or 98 to 100, since 100 correspond to z equal to 0, and 98 correspond to z equal to negative 1, then we press like this. Na? Shift 1, 5, uh, then p, 0. So, that is probability to the left of 0. And then we subtract. Na? We subtract. Shift 1, 5. 1. And we input negative 1. So, that is P negative 1. That is the area to the left of 98. So, in this case, when we subtract the 2, what will appear is P0 minus P negative 1. And that is already the required probability here. No? P0 to the left of 100 minus P negative 1 to the left of 98. So, what remains when you subtract is the area in between 98 to 100. And if you press your calculator, this is equal to 0.34134. Okay, so practice the pressing in the calculator. Uh, by the way, the calculator I am using here is the 991 Casio 991 ES Plus. No? For Canon or any other calculator, uh, try to read the manual. What is the corresponding K to be pressed na, in the calculator so that we can come up with the same answer? Okay, I think uh, uh, there is a very slight uh, difference in using Canon. Na? Okay. So, we will go to question number two. So, the probability that the pipe selected has a diameter larger than 102. So, larger than 102 meaning 103, 104, and so on. Huh? Okay. So, the mean is 100, and then I have x equal to 102 somewhere here. Na? So, x equal to 102. So, the probability required is to the right, na, um, above, that is to the right of 102. Uh, so, I will first solve for the z corresponding to 102. So, from the formula, x is 102, the mean is 100, standard deviation is 2, so equal to 1. Uh, so, to solve for the required area, so that is the area to the right, no? this part here. Okay. So, press the same in calculator, shift 1, distribution. But by this time, do not press 1 here, but press 3, that is R. And then we have 1. So, the meaning there is the area to the right of Z equal to 1. And that is our requirement in question number 2. No? So, when you press equal sign, that is 0.15866. Okay, so for this problem, number 2, this is about normal distribution. No? So, kindly uh, 
recall the procedure and the pressing practice pressing in your calculator problem number three the first cost of an equipment is 200,000 with a salvage value of one-fifth of its first cost at the end of its life of five years question number one Determine the depreciation charge during the third year using the sum of the year's digit method. And number two, determine the total depreciation after three years using the straight line method. So this is a depreciation topic in economics. No? And we have two methods here, uh, SYD and the straight line method. No? Okay. So we will have number one first. So how will we solve depreciation using SYD method? So SYD meaning sum of the years digit method. Na? Okay. So first tabulate the year. So we have one to five. No one, two, three, four, five, because we have five year life of our equipment. Then do the reverse. So the reverse year. So starting with 5 up to 1. Uh, then we can have the sum. Na? So the sum can be obtained by summing up 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 and that is equal to 15. So if we have life larger than 5, of course, just do the addition. Na? 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 and so on. Or you can use the formula for the sum. Uh, if in case we have a very large number of years na? so n over 2 times n plus 1 uh, so if you check uh, 5 over 2 times 5 plus 1 that is we still give you 15 Okay. so the next uh, column in the table is the depreciation factor and the depreciation factor is the rate at which the depreciation for a given year or for the uh, years will be computed okay the depreciation factor is equal to the reverse year over the sum so for the first year the depreciation factor is reversed 5 over the sum okay take not na in the second year the depreciation factor is reversed which is 4 over the sum 15 uh, and so on. So for the third year, 3 over 15. Second year, 2 over 15. First year, or the fifth year, I mean. Huh? Uh, so fifth year, five, uh, 1 over 15. So reverse in the first year, 5 over 15. In the second year, 4 over 15. In the third year, 3 over 15. In the fourth year, 2 over 15. In the fifth year, 1 over 15. So the meaning here is that the depreciation charges in every year will decrease na? Uh, starting with the largest in the first year and then decreasing, decreasing to a smaller value to the later years. Uh, then, what is the depreciation charge in the given year? So the depreciation charge in the given year is equal to the depreciation factor tabulated multiplied by the difference first cost minus the salvage value so the first cost here is 200,000 and then the salvage value is one-fifth no? so one-fifth of 200,000 is 40,000 so the difference is 160,000 no? so this is first cost minus salvage value is equal to 160,000 so in the first year depreciation, this is 5 over 15 times 160, 53,333.33. In the second year, this is 4 over 15 times 160,000, so 42,666.62. In the third year, this is equal to this, multiplied by 160, and this is 32,000. And this is what we look for na? the depreciation charge during the third year uh, so our answer for number one is the 32,000 so if in case you encounter a problem in which uh, that ask for the depreciation in the 
later years so just continue no? in order to get the depreciation charge during the required year okay so SYD method no? so number two we have the straight line method so compute the total depreciation after three years using the straight line method so in the straight line method we have equal annual depreciation charge na in every year we have equal the same lang yung annual depreciation din natin and the d is simply equal to first cost minus salvage value over the life of the equipment so this is 160,000 divided by 5 na so we have 32,000 uh, then, how will we solve for the total depreciation? So, since we have equal depreciation in the years, so simply, the total depreciation for uh, after a given number of years, so that is simply the number of years multiplied by D. Uh, so, if D sub N is the total depreciation after N years, so we are asked for D3, no? So, D3 is simply equal to 3 times the annual depreciation na 32,000. And the answer is equal to 96,000. Uh, so, this is depreciation using the straight line method. Next problem we have here. Problem number 4. A plane region on the first quadrant is bounded by the parabola x squared equal to 2y. The line x is equal to 4 and the x-axis. Then the question, find the moment of inertia of the region with respect to the x-axis. Okay. So, to solve this problem, this is moment of inertia by integration, integral calculus, no? So, first, uh, draw the figure. So, x squared equal to 2y is a parabola, vertex at the origin, opening upward. Huh? Mm. Then, the line x is equal to 4 is a vertical line when and it crosses the x-axis at 4. Huh? So, x is equal to 4. Uh, so, in the figure, the parabola and the line intersect at this point. So, this point is when x is 4. So, when x is 4, 4 squared is 16, divided by 2, y is 8. So, this is at 4, 8. Uh, then, the other boundary for our region is the x-axis. So, we have this. Na? Mm. So, what is the moment of inertia of this region bounded by the parabola, the line, and the x-axis with respect to the x-axis? Okay. So, for this problem about moment of inertia by integration, we know that in integral calculus, we divide the area into small areas, no? rectangular areas. So, if the problem is about moment of inertia, so very important, slice or divide the area into rectangles such that the rectangles are parallel to the axis where the moment of inertia is to be computed so this since this is the moment of inertia here is to be computed with respect to the x-axis so we will slice horizontal rectangles here parallel to the x-axis so if I will cut one rectangle representative rectangle na? so the red, red area here this is at a distance y from the x-axis and this is the differential area DA, na? So, this is a differential area DA. I will write DA here, here, na? Uh, so, this is a differential area DA. Okay. And the differential area DA is equal to the differential with dy times the length and the length here can be expressed as the difference of two x values no? the first x value is the area or x on the right which is 4 and the second x value is the x on the left 
Uh, where the x on the left is bounded by the parabola x squared equal to 2y and if we solve for x there which is the x or the value of x on the left that is square root of 2y okay so the da here is simply length which is the difference of the two x values times the width which is dy so formula for integration for moment of inertia i x na no? i with respect to the x axis equal to the integral of y squared da uh, so i x equal to y squared and the da is length x r minus x left times the width dy uh, so ito yung da natin ha uh, ito yung part na da Okay, uh, so when we now substitute y squared xr is 4, then yl or xr is 4, xl is square root of 2y dy. Limits, since we have dy, so along the y from 0 up to 8. Uh, so press the calculator, we have 97.52. Uh, by the way, when you press or when, when you input this in your calculator, of course, uh, you already know that uh, that we change the y into x. Uh, change the y into x in our calculator, automatic, that is the x. Uh, so the answer is 97.52. So moment of inertia by integration, integral calculus. Problem number five. A truncated prism has a horizontal square base with sides 10 cm. The lateral edges are perpendicular to the plane of the base and measure 12, 12, 8, and 8 cm respectively. Compute the volume of the truncated prism. So, truncated prism, na is a prism in which the lateral edges are not equal. So, in this case here, we have a square base of sides 10 cm. And if we plot the lateral edges, we have 12, 12, 8, and 8. Uh, so, if you recall, the volume of this prism is area of the base times the average of the heights or the average of the heights are the lateral edges so the base is a square and then we have here the heights so we can simply have 10 square times 12 plus 12 plus 8 plus 8 over 4 uh, then the volume is 1000 cubic centimeter Problem number 6 A 0.5 kilogram mass is swung in a vertical circle of 0.8 meter radius uh, at the end of the cable at an angular speed of 1.5 revolutions per second Question number 1 Find the centripetal acceleration Question number 2 Find the maximum tension in the cable Okay so we have here a 0.5 kilogram mass no? and this is swung in a vertical circle the radius so that is probably the string attached no? used to swung it in a circle has a length of 0.8 meter so the radius at which the weight or the mass is moving in a circular manner is 0.8 meter so, the angular speed is constant at 1.5 revolutions per second. Okay. So, if the mass or a body na, is moving in a circular path at angular speed of 1.5 revolutions per second, it has a tangential acceleration. Uh, but since this is moving with constant angular velocity, 
this is zero no? the tangential acceleration is zero and since this is moving with change in direction this is being accelerated inward no? and that is the centripetal acceleration or the normal acceleration so the centri centripetal acceleration has a formula no? uh, but the formula here involves the angular speed in radians per second so first convert the angular speed to radians per second so multiply one revolution equal to two pi radian so the result here is three pi radians per second and for our centripetal acceleration we have omega squared times r or if the velocity is given in linear centripetal acceleration is v squared over r Okay, so we are given the angular speed, no? 3 pi regions per second, then r is 0.8. Uh, so we have the centripetal acceleration, 71.06 meter per second square. The second question is the maximum tension in the cable. Okay. So, for the maximum tension in the cable, that occurs, no? the maximum tension occur when the weight is at the lowest point. No? The mass is at the lowest point. Because the tension carried by the cable is a combination of the weight, which is mass 0 0.5 times 981, 4.905 newtons, and also then the centrifugal force so we know that when the body is moving in a circular path it is acted by a centrifugal force directed outward huh? and the centrifugal force is equal to m omega squared r uh, if you notice this is mass times acceleration no? So, in the previous slide, we compute for the acceleration. No? But since this is rotation, this is centripetal acceleration. So, mass times the centripetal acceleration. So, if you compute, this is 0.5 times 3 pi squared times 0.8. This is 35.53 newtons. So, we have now the tension, the maximum tension in the quick, in the uh, cable, no? uh, maximum tension of the cable, which carries again the weight and the centrifugal force. So, summation of forces vertical, T is 4.905 plus 35.53. And that is equal to 40.44 newtons. Okay, so we have six problems, no? six topics in this video. So, kindly recall, no? kindly study for your final examination. So, thank you very much. I hope my discussion helped you in your preparation in answering the final examination and in the MAC board exam, pre-board exam. No? Thank you very much. Uh, see you next video.